given how things went in Oregon, how important is it, especially, or how tough is it that you have a, a team like Utah coming in here this first time? <laughs> Real <laughs> tough. <laughs> you know, they're the deepest team in our league uh, and might be one of the biggest teams in our league. You know, they can put two, maybe three seven-footers that they can rotate. So they're big and they're deep and talented and very confident. So uh, it's not easy coming home. It's very similar to what we had coming home for Stanford, but even a team that has had more success than Stanford. So, you know, hopefully hopefully we're just better, you know, having the experience of without Tony. Uh, hopefully we can get him back to some level uh, in these two home games. We don't know yet. We're still, he's still day-to-day. He's going to do more today. So uh, we're looking forward to see how he does today and how he progresses throughout the week. But obviously need him. I, I thought he was coming off his three best games of his career. And, uh, then going to Oregon, that's uh, we thought that's where we could exploit Oregon and Oregon State a little bit was inside, and you know we tried doing that, but that's not fair to Tom. You know, in his first couple starts, you know we got he got a lot out of what he's doing, but he'll he'll get to that point. You know, Tony's in his third year, so he's a little bit more familiar with how to do that, and so that that makes it tough because um, you got to find more ways of scoring, and and this team's had its challenges as of finding ways of scoring. And then we run into an Oregon team that, you know, just made absolutely everything. So that didn't help either. How do you get their minds right facing a team that beat you guys by 32 points? <laughs> yeah, well, we actually talked to them about, you know, we're not guaranteed to be able to play Kentucky again. Uh, we got the guarantee of playing Utah again, you know. So you've got an opportunity now playing a home game. That doesn't mean that that equates to a win. But uh, there is a difference uh, of playing here and playing in Salt Lake City. And we've got to do a good job of, of making sure the guys have a great mindset. We had a great practice yesterday. Uh, their mindset has been very good. You know, we're dealing, you know, we're still trying to get guys healthy um, on a team that's not real deep. The health is the biggest issue. And then what you're alluding to is kind of the mind. You know, so we're dealing with physical health and we're dealing uh, with the mental side of it as well. So there's a lot going on. But as we've told our guys, that adversity is how we become the team and people that we want to become and how we handle it. And they have fought. They, they're doing everything we're asking to them effort-wise. But you know what? we got to ask for more. Uh, we got to ask more as coaches uh, of what we do and how we prepare. And we've got to ask more from the team. And we're going to need that this weekend because these are two really good teams coming in here. You know, Colorado's beat up a little bit like we are. They're probably getting back healthy, but um, Utah's been healthy for most of the year and, you know, top 15 teams. So uh, that's a daunting task. We're going to have to play well. If Tony were to be able to play, where's the biggest concern given that with his back? Is it just is it posting up or is it? Well, my biggest concern would be telling you that he's had about eight to ten days off. So my biggest concern with Tony would be conditioning. Uh, you know, but he looks good. He doesn't look like, you know, he's picked up weight or any of those things. It's just it's different when you haven't been on the court. So that would be my biggest concern. But um, I haven't s- spoke to the doctors today, but um, I think he's getting much more comfortable in a lot of the areas um, that they've been concerned about. And he's shown progression. He stayed home for the whole trip. So each day he's gotten better. And today he's supposed to be cleared to do some non-contact stuff. So tomorrow will be a big day to see how he comes through having a practice where he's at least been able to go through some things even though it's not no contact. With Tony's a little limited moving forward, do you want to start designing things inside a bit more for Kavan? Well, we will. Um, you know, Kavan, Kavan's a, a unique individual in that he does his best when he's playing off of everybody. Uh, when you go to him in certain things, I don't think in, in certain areas, I don't think he normally looks as good as he does when he's playing off of people. Uh, when people can create for him and he gets to slide and do the things that he likes to do, whether it be offensive rebound or it gets a short corner, uh, we will post him, though. There's no question that um, we've got to post him and we've got to get him the ball a little bit more at the pinch post area. And I think you'll see him bring it up. Uh, yeah, I do think you'll start seeing him as a way for us to give Bryce uh, a little bit of, uh, if a little bit of a blow is even um, – capable for him this year we got to get him off the ball some so that uh, he can use his ability of cutting without the balls because he's so good at that so that'll give our offense a little bit different look too and I think you'll, you could see Kavon bringing the ball up some with the slump Isaac's going through is there any thought to changing bringing him off the bench or changing anything to how you work you know we we just gotta be patient with him and, and we've told him that of how much we believe in him and we're trying to relieve as much pressure as we can with him and uh, tell him just to be who he is and Tell him how much we believe in him because now that's changed. You know, it's just uh, players go through that. And uh, I try to tell him about whether it's my experience as a player or other players that I've coached or, or, or even played with that, 
you go through times like this where the thing just won't go in. So find other ways, get to the free throw line, get out on the break and get layups in transition. Uh, be that defender that gets deflections or takes a charge or gets six, seven rebounds in a game. There's so many other ways that you can control a basketball game other than just shooting, but he's such a conscientious kid um, and that's what you like about him. He wants to do well and that's why we believe in him. If he didn't care, it'd be a whole different thing. But uh, Isaac's like a lot of our guys, they just care so deeply, but sometimes it just it compounds it when you're overanalyzing things. And hopefully he can just free himself up. He had a tremendous practice yesterday. He just needs to kind of free himself up and just play. And when he does that, he's really good. I know there's not a lot of flexibility personnel-wise. So how, how do you take the pressure off? Uh, spend a lot of time communicating with him. Spend a lot of time in, in film, showing him things that uh, when he's been really successful um, and when he's had good moments of play, to whether it's driving the basketball, playing the, the defensive end, rebounding and going, making the right decision making, showing him positive stuff so he can see it. Uh, and then continue to challenge him, just like we would challenge, you know, all the guys of, you know, we, we talk about all the time, you gotta kinda etch a sketch, you know, the old etch a sketch. When things aren't good, you kinda shake that thing up and start over. And that he's gotta get beyond um, playing poorly and just, it's over. Get on to the next play, get on to the next game. Um, it's his role's not going to change. He's going to be on the floor a long time. We believe in him. We're going to go to him, uh, and we we need him to perform well, just like we need all those guys to perform well. So it's not just pressure on him. It's there's a lot of pressure on a lot of them. After seeing Thomas in that starting role, what what does he most need to improve on? You know, I, I think what you'll see him as he gets used to the physicality um, of really taking the next step of him being physical first. Uh, I think you'll see him go to a whole other level. He's got a great skill set. He he runs adequately right now. He'll continue to run better, uh, but he's very strong and physical. If you ask our guys, the one guy they don't want to bang into in practice, it's Thomas. And so we're trying to convince him, make sure the opponents are saying that same thing too. And right now he he's going away from contact and contact's hitting him and it's getting him off balance. And I think once he figures that out to go make contact first, whether that's in a post up, whether that's in his post move, whether that's in handling the ball, I, I think you'll see Thomas go to a whole nother level because he can he can score the ball. He's the one guy, I think, this year in particular off the bench that you know he could be a seven, eight point game scorer for us here in his freshman year. And I, I, I hope and I think his his point production will go up here as the year goes on. Aside from just their size, what is it that Utah's big men do particularly well? Well, they all run the floor very well. They're strong and physical. They've got a really good skill set. Um, so you have to guard them. And in guarding them, that frees up a lot of, now that they got leverage back, he, he can play the three and the four. So he and Reyes can, Reyes can play some four. Then you got uh, Burkad, who's a very good freshman that comes in for him. Uh, I still think Taylor, um, uh, Taylor and Wright kind of run that team and make sure they're doing what they need to do. They don't beat themselves. They play extremely hard at both ends of the floor. You know, we got, they scored 24 field goals on us in game one. 16 of them were on transition and second shots. So we can't give a team like this easy baskets. We have to take transition away. We have to take away second shots. If we do that, I think we can keep in the game and give ourselves a chance. If we don't, if it's like Salt Lake City where they're getting 70% of their points in transition second shots, that's, that's going to be a long day for us. Right, and his versatility, what kind of challenges does that present? Well, he can beat you in so many ways. That's what I was talking about earlier about our young players you know, learning that. He doesn't have to score. He doesn't have to make shots to beat you. He's very athletic. He's, I think, arguably, if he's not the best defending guard in our league, he, he's right there one, two. He, he gets steals, but then if he doesn't get steals, he's, he understands fake trapping. He understands being in the right position at the right time. He comes up with big defensive plays. He's a, a big guard that can rebound. So he can beat you by getting three, four steals a game, five, six deflections a game, and seven, eight rebounds a game, and not score double figures. And he can still have a tremendous impact on the game. And there are a lot of, a lot of players in our league that, can, that you can say that about. And I think that's what makes him special. With Jonah cleared to practice, what does that mean for you guys? And what do you, what's kind of the arc for Well, him? you know, we haven't talked about that, but, you know, we didn't have Juana much in December. Um, we gave him a lot of time off to concentrate academically. And uh, so we didn't have him much in, in – um, in December, so you're down with him, you're down with Jonah. Now you've got both Juana and Jonah practicing. So if we can get the regulars now back healthy, um, yesterday was about as full boat as we've been in, in three months, and that helped us because we were able to be very competitive in practice. If you're not real competitive in practice, it's hard to keep getting better. And 
yesterday we saw that, and hopefully today we're going to be, you know, healthy enough that uh, we'll be able to do that as well. I'm not sure, but Norman's a little sick, so don't know if he'll go today. So we just got to get everybody back healthy so that uh, now that we got Jonah, that makes a big difference because um, he's a big guard or he can play our stretch four and, and really do a lot of things helping both bigs and guards. Norman had the flu? I hope not. I'm, I'm waiting, but uh, I'm not sure if he'll practice today. How much did you guys miss Tony, you feel like, uh, when you guys were in Oregon? Uh, a lot. I mean, it showed not only in our play, but just our emotion. You know, he's a very talkative guy, as you guys know. He's very emotional, very outgoing. He kind of just lifts us up in that area. That's kind of par partially his role on and off the court is just uh, giving us that kind of fire, you know, and he gives us he jokes around, you know, he gets us in a good mood, gets us loose. And uh, we were a little uptight on that trip, I felt like, and we didn't really have that chemistry that we normally have when he's there. Good, you know that's a tough that's a tough thing to do. Um, I know I had to do it last year um, on very short notice for the Oregon game uh, here, and it's not it's not easy. You know, it's not it's not an easy thing. And being a center, that's that's tough too. And uh, playing a team like like uh, Oregon, who doesn't really play a legit center, uh, that's tough on him too. There's really never a good matchup for him in that game, especially. And uh, uh, I thought he did a great job. You know, he he played his role. He did what he had to do, and uh, he's going to keep continuing to get better because he works harder than anybody. Where do you feel like the defense kind of took a step backward against Oregon over here? Yeah, you know, it was just a it was a bad trip. Uh, we just had a lot of a lot of mishaps, um, and not having not having Tony's a big part of that. You know, he's he's our center. He's he's what anchors our defense, and uh, it's tough. It's tough to have that, and then having a shorter rotation that makes it tough too, because uh, you gotta you gotta figure out where to conserve energy, and you can't do that on the defensive end, and uh, it's hard to do that in the offensive end when you're giving up a lot of points on the defensive end. So. Uh, it's it was a tough deal, and uh, we just got to get over it and try to get our defense back on the right page here at home. What specifically do you need to improve on? Uh, well, specifically in the Oregon game, we didn't stop dribble drive at all, and we didn't challenge shots. Uh, that's something that we've been working on uh, yesterday in practice. I know we'll do it again today. Uh, just challenging shots. Uh, we've noticed that watching tape that uh, we've been really bad lately of just getting up in people and making it tough on them, making shots. Oregon had a made a lot of shots in that game, obviously shooting 60 plus percent for the game and making a lot of threes, uh, but we didn't make it hard on them, you know. We got to get up and pressure a little bit more and not not make it so easy for them to do whatever they want. Did it make it hard to maintain your defensive effort on other possessions because all those shots were going in? Yeah, you know, that's just a confidence thing, you know. You see, uh, you work hard for a possession and then it gets down to under 10 seconds and then they make an open shot or they make a tough shot, you know, that hurts your confidence on the defensive end. and that. That hurts your effort a little bit, and we can't have we can't have those kind of mishaps. You know, when somebody scores on you, uh, we've been talking about that's a pride deal. You know, somebody scores on you, you gotta you gotta have that pride. Like, all right, they're not scoring the next time, and we didn't really have that on this trip. When you look back on the last Utah game, what kind of got out of hand early on in that one? Uh, yeah, you know, I, it's that's a tough one. Uh, we just we were ready to play for that game. You know, that's a tough place to play first and foremost. Uh, we came off a really really tough loss against a Colorado team that we thought we should have beaten that game. Um, and we just didn't play well in that game, and it just kind of carried over into the Utah game. And uh, we hung in for about, I think, the first six or seven minutes. But after that, we just, you know, we couldn't make anything. And uh, that, that affected our defense, you know, when our offense isn't clicking and then they, they keep scoring on you, it just, it goes downhill. And we didn't, we didn't do a good job of fighting in that game. What kind of challenges does, does Wright present to you guys? How versatile he is? Yeah, you know, it's kind of like Kyle last year. He's a very big and physical point guard. You know, he's not something that you see very often. He's a six, six, six long athletic uh, point guard, and he's really good on the defensive end. And uh, he just does it all for his team. And uh, he can he can beat you by scoring. He can beat you by getting on the glass, by getting steals, and and by passing the ball as well. So uh, it's trying to it's kind of like picking your poison with him and trying to limit him as much as you can, and, and try to limit the other guys as, as well. With Kavon, it seems like sometimes he'll take close to ten free throws. for him or does he need to kind of just make himself more active? Yeah, it, he's kind of a hard one to figure out. Uh, just as a point guard, uh, he's kind of a hard one to figure out because uh, he's not really a guy that, that you got to run plays for. He kind of does it on his own. And I've noticed that just by playing games. You know, he, he's a garbage guy. He, he gets majority of his points off offensive glass and, and rebounding his own misses and, and, and going to the basket and stuff. But uh, we're definitely looking for, for as many ways as we can to get him the ball in operating areas where he can score because – 
uh, he's one of our best players on the offensive end. It was great, yeah. I mean, it was a big opportunity for me. I just went out there and did the best I could to try to help the team win. It didn't uh, didn't go the way we planned, but I think I learned a lot and uh, definitely gained a lot of experience there. What was hard for you uh, getting those first six sides? I don't think it was really like anything that stood up for being that hard. It was just kind of playing extended minutes and going out there when the, the ball went up for the tip. So it wasn't that different, I think, but I think it was just a good experience for me. Coach was talking about you know, your mentality in terms of you know, dealing out being physical as opposed to other guys being physical with you. Is that just kind of a mental thing you have to get into the swing of it and, and play a, a little bit more to? I think definitely, yeah. I think it's a mindset. Just go out there and to be physical, just try to be the uh, dominating presence down in the paint. That's something I'm definitely working on. It's a big thing for me as a center, so I'm just trying to make strides in that area. What gave you guys problems defensively on the, in the media where you played? That's a great question, yeah. I mean, they were incredible on offense and we kind of made them seem that way because I don't think our defense was uh, working the way we would like it to. I think our help defense is one thing that I guess could have used some work in that game, just uh, being able to help uh, when there's a breakdown and then recovering after that. Uh, I think it just didn't go well for us, but we're going to watch the tape on that, learn from it, and be ready for this next game against Utah. Do you see yourself right now as a center who more that can st stretch and, and kind of hit long jumpers, or is it is your game think more focused on just kind of playing around the hoop, I guess, right now? I think that's definitely big for me as a center to be able to play around the hoop. I think mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at those 15-foot uh, jump shots, but I want to make sure that as a center I'm able to get down there in the low post and bang people on offense and defense, get rebounds, because that's really what I'm supposed to do out there, and shooting jump shots, I guess, is kind of mm -hmm. an extra. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How much do you guys think you miss Tony on the Oregon Hawks? It was big, yeah. I mean, uh, all of a sudden to face that adversity of missing uh, a starting center was a uh, big adjustment for us and then having only three bigs to play those two games and all being freshmen it was a, a challenge for us but mm -hmm. it didn't go the way we planned but I think we learned a lot from it we're better we'll be uh, better because of it. Mm -hmm. How did it feel when you got the news? Really good I mean it was good to be back with the team and coming back yesterday you know I haven't been doing a five on five and you know the day-to-day the -day basis up against guys you know my height my weight you know so it's good real good. What do you feel like is the most important area for you to work on? Uh, these months ahead? Definitely my physical, you know, just strength and, and, and mental strength as well. So, but, you know, coming from the four position and transitioning to the three and, and, and more of a guard type player. So, yeah. What have you been able to do over the last, you know, few months? Just on your own? Yeah, well, I, I got some individuals from Coach Schilling, you know, working by myself and, and, and having guys, you know, come in and help me, help rebound for me and, and, you know, help me work out, stuff like that. So, but definitely not like the, the day to day, you know, up against guy five and five. So, it's good. Coach Schilling felt like said he knew um, when you were coming in that it was a 50 50 shot that you would be able to play. Like what, was, what, what were you hoping before the NCAA rules? Were yeah, I mean, of course, I was coming in hoping to, to be able to play, but that 50 50 always played, played with me in the back of my mind. And, and you know, I, I still, you know, in the summer I was practicing with the guys like for the hours that we had a week. And so it was, it was always playing with me, you know, whether I was going to be able to play or not, but I was still, still giving it my 100%. So. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely difficult. You know, even <coughs> I wasn't eligible to <coughs> sit on the sit on the bench before, so I was sitting in the stands, and it's kind of good, you know, being able to sit away and watch and just have the outsider's point of view, and then come back and be able to <coughs> help my teammates, give them what I saw from an outsider's point of view, rather, uh, like con contrast to like a, a, a bench player or, or someone that's on the court. So, what were you able to see? I was definitely able, able to see like gaps in in our defense and offense, and and just like. Even off the court, seeing the bench players, you know, their spirit is is definitely critical to our wins and losses, you know, on the, on the road games and stuff like that. So, what did you try and work on in your game when you were getting ready to prepare for this day? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, like I said, my, my guard type still. So, the coach was giving me like you know some some NBA workouts, like stuff like they do for the, for the guards, like the the um, you know Giannis and uh, and and Ken Tigbo from from Milwaukee, stuff like that. So. It was, kind of stuff like, like my type of um, frame for my body and stuff like that. So, Have they told you they kind of see you playing a similar similar role to what Kavan is doing now where he can play that big guard or he can yeah. also go up? And yeah, most definitely. You know, I, I watch Kavan and, you know, being, like I said, outside his point of view and, and seeing that I can kind of relate to it, the way he, he plays and stuff like that, get the rebound, go coast to coast, you know, hit the three here and there. So, so yeah, yeah, that's, that was most definitely. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were kind of talked up as an NBA, NBA prospect coming out of high school. Have you given any thought to what your plan is for next year? Are you planning to stick around for a year? I mean, most definitely my goal is, you know, to get to the NBA, but 
my, my main priority right now is here at UCLA, so 